Hey guys, CB Super here today. Um, today we're going to go over some uh, corner pinning and tracking. So let's jump right in. Uh, one thing I like about DaVinci Resolve is how easy it is to track some footage and then add in your own footage to cover it. So here we have just this video. I'm just going to shorten it down a little bit. Here we have this video footage where uh, it's got some camera movement. It looks like it's probably on a tripod and it's just moving from left to right. Uh, we want to track one of these screens. We'll go ahead and track this screen right here. And we're going to just replace it with maybe one of these other footages that we have over here. So I've already created a new project. I've already uploaded some uh, some little footage here. I have this I have this pretty neat little like matrix type looking thing. Maybe we'll throw on these dancers. We'll see. We might get crazy with it. So let's jump over into the Fusion tab and you'll find that you really only need one node and if you shift space and type in tracker, uh, you actually want the planar tracker, planar tracker add, and we can just connect it, connect it out. And you can pretty much leave all of these settings the same for right now for what we're doing. Uh, we want it to be on track and then you want to maybe uh, hit, hold the command and use the mouse wheel to zoom in a little bit. Go back to the front, to the very beginning. I find that it works a little bit better if you track from front to back. And it always depends on the footage, but uh, DaVinci seems to work a little bit better if you track from front to back. And you can just make uh, four pretty precise um, track points. Uh, once you get them all laid down, um, over here on the very far right, there's a track to end. Just go ahead and left click on that and let it do its thing. Now it's going to track through and I'm going to zoom out here just a little bit so you can kind of see that it's building this track data. Okay, so it's made its way through all that. Um, you can see it's created a bunch of keyframes. Uh, we can go all the way back to the beginning. And if you hit play, you'll see that the, the, the keyframes are tracked. Um, but what we want to do is we want to come over here to the operation mode. Once we have that track data, we can go ahead and click on corner pin. And it's going to throw out these four corner pins um, just out into the, to the universe there. We can just kind of move them over to where we want to replace our footage. Uh, again, just kind of scroll in just to get a little closer. Now, one thing I found that if you if you match it up right with the screen, it's probably going to be too small. But I want to show you first, so I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. You match it up perfectly with the screen. Um, now we need to bring in some more uh, media. So I can come up here to the media pool, click on that, and that's going to just uh, open up my media pool of all the things that I uploaded into the edit panel. Uh, maybe I'll bring in this matrix looking thing and just connect it up to the planar tracker. Um, one thing you have to make sure is go, if, it, mine's already working because I've done this before, but um, if you come over here to the merge node, you're going to want foreground over background. Uh, and that is just so, this is, this first media is your foreground, the second media, the first one that we originally did is your background. Um, and just make sure that they're loaded into the appropriate uh, triangles here. So like yellow means it's in the background, green means it's in the foreground and vice versa. So uh, now we can kind of just play through and we'll notice that it's pretty well tracked but you'll notice see, see how oh so when you're live previewing it it's going to look like it's going to jump back and forth and that's just because uh it takes a few seconds or it takes like a half second for your computer to catch up so if you just make sure you click off when you're viewing this and you kind of see how we already have this like maybe a little bit of like white or a light and that's the actual screen that was behind it that's kind of coming through so if you click on the planar tracker you can come in here and you can actually just enlarge it just a little bit and that usually will get rid of that light and this is going to be one of those things that um da vinci will DaVinci will paste it on there really nicely, but you'll notice that it still looks horrible, right? It has no reflections. Uh, it hasn't been composited in here. Uh, the saturation is way too high. The tonality is a little bit different. Um, so 
what we would do is we would put this on and then we would go and we would you know finish up the compositing uh, but today for today's purposes it's just fine so let's kind of play through here a little bit and watch it all right so he's entranced by the matrix at the moment and everybody else is around him is working all right so that's pretty much it i mean it's it's that simple uh, if you jump back over to your edit tab, you can see that it's updated live and, you know, it's going to have to cache and all of that. But, I mean, you can replace it very easily. All right. So once you jump back over into the edit tab, you can see that track holds up pretty well. All right. So that's pretty much it. Um, this is a really fast thing to do in DaVinci Resolve. I feel like it's, I feel like it's faster to do it in DaVinci than it is in After Effects. Um, and it's really simple and it holds up really well. So, all right, so that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, uh, leave them down in the comments. And if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one.